Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be the last game review that I will be uploading for a while. It's the last one that I've had to catch up on from previous games that I've already finished for the channel. I'm going to try to get both of them out this weekend, and then I will be caught up besides finishing The Evil Within. So, this is Resident Evil Village, or Resident Evil 8, depending on how you like to say it. This game came out this year. Uh, I should be able to remember when, but I don't. But it had to have been close to the beginning of the year. I'm just not sure what month it was. But this was a really good game. And I was super stoked for the longest time before this game came out. Because there was a big gap, like three or four year gap between Resident Evil 7 and this one. So I'm curious to see. But granted, in that time gap, they did remake Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. So realistically, there's almost been a new Resident Evil game every year. But I've heard rumors that there's going to be a remake of Resident Evil 4, and then there's also supposedly going to be one more after this one. Like, this one is supposed to be a trilogy, so there's supposedly a Resident Evil 9 that's going to come out, but I would assume that's going to take another two or three years of development before that comes out. But I have heard something about a remake of Resident Evil 4. So I'm curious to see if that's going to happen, because of course I will probably get it if there is a remake, just to see how it compares to the original. So anyway, let's get into this review. Once again, this is gameplay of mine. So technically, spoiler alert, but it's only the first 20 to 30 minutes of the game. So it doesn't spoil a lot for you guys if you have yet to play it. So first category is interest value. The cover of the game is very simple. It depicts the title of the game at the bottom. The village part is really big, and it is overhead the Resident Evil part, so that is really small. And the background is basically Chris's face. It's hard to tell unless you're familiar with the game that it is Chris. But the facing you, the left side of his face is human, while the right side of his face in the dark, darker area looks almost like a werewolf type face. So... This is a game that came out for the Xbox Series X, but you could also still get it for the One if you so desired, as well as PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, I believe, and then PC, Steam, whatever have you. I don't think it's coming to Switch, but I'm not sure on that. The back of the case is also very simple. The top just shows a little bit of a horizon with a castle in the background. It says, Fear Surrounds You. And then it has two pictures below that. It looks like one is the inside of a building, maybe like a mansion. And the other one is the face of a howling werewolf. And it says, Fight for Survival in a Village Filled with Unspeakable Horrors and Vicious Creatures. Now... <clears throat> I dogged a little on the Resident Evil 7 case and docked at a point because I thought it was a very simple case. And from the front, it was very hard to tell what it was unless you were super up close or if you are a fan of the game and you recognized it. This one, I think, is a little worse. The back of this game does not have a lot of description at all. So, I mean... In my opinion, you have to be hiding under a rock to not know what the Resident Evil series is. It's graced the gaming industry since well before I was born. So, it is a fantastic series. Any gamer worth their salt knows what Resident Evil is. Even if they haven't played it, you should still know what it is. But, unless... Some people, unless you're a fan of this, you may not recognize the cover. Because the Resident Evil title itself is so small and is underneath the village part of the title, which is pretty big. So, the one thing I don't like about that is I knew they did new things for Resident Evil 7 
which then moved into Resident Evil 8. I do like that they changed the gameplay to first person and changed the story and things like that. However, I wish they wouldn't have done that to the case and the title. I think it should have been a little better. You could have maybe made it a little brighter. But from far away, all it looks like is a guy with a glowing eye and black surrounding him. And the word village. You can't really see anything else. So for that, I had to score it less than the other Resident Evil. So I had to give this one an 8 out of 10 just based on the case of interest value. Like I said, unless you are familiar with the universe of Resident Evil, reading the case or looking it over, you would not recognize it, nor would the title or description on the back really influence you to buy it, in my opinion. So that's that. Moving on from there, I do want to make a quick note that this game does continue on from the end of Resident Evil 7, for those that did not know. It is the same main character, some of the same side characters, but it's different villains, different setting, and it's a couple years later. But it does continue on, which is different. Technically, you could say the other Resident Evils follow a timeline, which they do, but almost none of the characters or settings are the same. This is different to the series. These three games in particular, Resident Evil 7 and 8, which are already out, and then the future 9, are a set of three, a trilogy, that all go together, whereas the rest of them are standalone games. Yes, you could probably play this game on its own, but if you haven't played Resident Evil 7, you will not understand a lot of what's going on in this one, so it is well recommended that you play 7 before this. Moving on. We're going to go to ease of, of control. Like the other Resident Evil 7 games plus the remakes, the controls are very easy to learn and use, very similar to other survival shooting games like Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, things like that. It does allow you to change the button configuration in the main menu and you could also change the color of the sights which i think is very unique to this game i don't remember being given that choice in some of the other ones so if you don't know what i'm talking about when you point down the barrel of a gun in particular the pistol in this game and it gives you the crosshairs most of the time it's a white color this game allows you to change the color and you could have red blue green white and there might have been either an orange, maybe not, maybe it was just red. But it was very unique. I'd never seen that in a Resident Evil game. And it was kind of nice to be able to customize your own sights. It may not be a big deal to some people. But with those who are partially colorblind or even have color sensitivity in certain colors, it's nice to be able to change the crosshairs to a color that's very easy to see for you. And not just the same white that it might be hard for others to see. So that's really awesome that they did that for their um, fans. Now, back to the ease of control. It's very easy to learn the controls, and they stay the same throughout the game. Very simple, not too many to learn, so therefore it earned a 10 out of 10. Graphics. The graphics, in my opinion, are absolutely phenomenal. Very next-gen, which is what they were going for. Even if you don't get this game for the next-gen consoles, so the Xbox Series X or the whatever the PlayStation one is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Even if you don't get it for the next-gen consoles and you play it on the older ones or even play it on Steam, I still think that the graphics are amazing and look really well, especially compared to Resident Evil 7. I thought Resident Evil 7 graphics were good. These are a leap and a bound ahead of that. This is like the next series of gaming. Like you almost feel like if you're playing in a dark room by yourself, if you're playing with a headset even, and you're right up there by the TV playing this, or your computer or whoever you're playing this, you could almost feel like you're in the game itself, which is awesome without having the ability of having a um, one of those virtual reality VR headsets. It feels like you're in the game. So I really enjoyed that a lot. Everything is super crisp. The images are realistic. 
it definitely hit my expectations. I don't think there's any way anybody could critique badly on the graphics. I didn't see anything that was bad in any way. The lighting is also amazing. You can change that as well. If you like a darker game, you can do that. If you like a lighter game, you can do that. And changing the lighting definitely ups the scares if you so desire. So for all that, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Freedom. The game does follow a set story like most Resident Evils do. But there are other things that you can check out, and this one definitely had more freedom of gameplay than Resident Evil 7 did. Resident Evil 7, you had the bobbleheads, and you could look for other guns, but that was practically it. In this game, there are numerous places that you get to visit, huge areas of the map. It is a way more advanced than Resident Evil 7 was compared to map size. And in this one, you look for little goats as an achievement, but you also are on the hunt for lock picks, the same as Resident Evil 7, and also there are way more guns and extensions for guns that you can find throughout the game that you cannot purchase from the merchant, which is another thing that they added in the game is the merchant. So it gives you more things to do, such as upgrades for your weapons that you couldn't do before, in Resident Evil 7. So they kind of brought back to me almost a mix of Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 4 where you had the merchant and could do upgrades and add-ons and customize your weapons and things like that. So I thought it was really good. So I gave it a 9 out of 10 for that category. Game story. It has a very thorough and interesting story in my opinion. It can be played alone as I stated before, but it makes much more sense if you play right after having played Resident Evil 7. However, this game did include a little trailer video of Resident Evil 7 and explained what happened in that one. So therefore you could skip that game, watch the little clip and understand the background story and jump into this game and probably be fine. But of course, you know, it's better if you had played Resident Evil 7 before this. The story, in my opinion, for Resident Evil 8 is very unique. It has many different aspects, tons of twists and turns, and lots of characters that you get to meet that are very unique in their own way. I know everybody is obsessed with the Lady Domitresque, um, but my personal favorite was Heisenberg. But every character was unique, and I loved them all. Fantastic game. I gave it a 10 out of 10 for game story. Extras. The game has achievements, like most games do, especially in-game. There were extra weapons to find, as I stated, extra ways to craft ammunition. Um, there was the goat. And the end game is similar to some of the other Resident Evils, whereas if you achieved certain achievements while in game, then you got points at the end of the game that you could rack up and unlock other things. So you have to yourself unlock the gallery, unlock figurines, unlock videos, behind the scenes pictures, things like that. You have to use points to unlock. And a lot of the points are really easy to get from really easy achievements, such as um, one of them is craft like one item. And of course it goes up to like craft 300 items. And depending on the difficulty of the achievement determines the amount of points you get to use. Uh, other things you could use with your points were buying infinite ammo for guns that you have fully upgraded through the Duke, who is the merchant. Other ones were once you beat the game, it unlocked certain weapons that you could buy depending on which, which difficulty of the game you completed. So that was a whole other thing because that influences you to replay the game in order to unlock these things. There also is the mercenaries was returned to this game. We haven't seen the mercenaries since Resident Evil 4 came out and that was a huge hit was the mercenaries. So to be able to have the mercenaries return to Resident Evil 8 is a huge thing for me. I love the mercenaries. It is a whole other gameplay. So it's another thing that you can play besides the main story. On top of that, 
I have heard that there is possibly going to be a DLC released for this game. I have not heard anything else about a date or what it's going to be about. So I'm curious to see if that is rumor or not. Also, they came out with Reverse for this one, which is essentially the online game mode that came out when Resident Evil 7 came out, except it's supposed to be, be better, but they have had problems with it. It was supposed to be released when this game came out. It has yet to be released, and the last I heard, if I'm correct, is this online mode is not going to be ready till the end of the year or even beginning of next year, which is not good. I don't know what happened, but they got so far behind on that that it's not even going to be available, which I know a lot of people are upset about, but we have a DLC that may might be coming to look forward to, and the game have t has tons of gameplay to have, so, I mean, and they haven't gotten rid of the online version for Resident Evil 7, so you could continue to play that, I believe, until the new one comes out. So, in terms of extras, I gave it a 9 out of 10. Realistically, I probably could have done a 10 out of 10, but I left it as a 9, as a lot of these extras are only end game and not during the game. Now, time to play. I spent over 12 hours in this game of normal gameplay. I took my time. I didn't rush, but neither did I go really slow. So the average is probably 10 hours around, depending on how you play. So, as I've said before, it's one point per hour, so it got a 10 out of 10 score. Replayability. As I've previously stated, this game definitely has replayability. Different difficulties to unlock. There's one that comes after Veteran or Hard or whichever it is called the Village of Shadows, which is supposedly really hard. Uh... There are other things to find. You can finish those achievements for points, as I stated. There's the mercenary mode. You can get new guns, unlimited weapons, faster times. There, it has a ton of different replayability options. So, therefore, it got a 10 out of 10 for that. The price, I pre-ordered it almost as soon as it came available. And the pre-order was 50 bucks. And if you pre-ordered it, you did get a few extras depending on the level of pre-order you did. I did the basic. So the first time you go to the Duke, I ended up getting a free lockpick, a free health, a couple, a box of free ammo for my handgun, and a box of free ammo for my shotgun, as well as a charm to go on my shotgun, I believe. It's either my shotgun or my handgun. So those were extra nice things that you could get. If you pre-ordered ahead of time, if you didn't, then you didn't get them. It wasn't like they were necessary, but it was nice to have in a brand new game. With all the extras you could get, as long as the game was, its replayability, the DLC coming out, the online gameplay coming out, and the mercenaries, I definitely think this deserved a 10 out of 10 for price, and it was well worth the 50 bucks. Now, for my personal score, I absolutely love this game. I almost believe, and now my husband disagrees, but in my opinion, it is on par with Resident Evil 4, and it, it may even dethrone Resident Evil 4 for me as best Resident Evil game ever. Resident Evil 4 was the top of my list for, I don't know, forever, and I have played a lot of Resident Evil games, but there were, nothing was as good as that game. It was the first one I ever played, and I play it all the time. It has been my absolute favorite, but as soon as I finished this game and I sat here thinking, and I was just like, man, this game is so fantastic. And I love the storyline and the background so much that I think I like it better than Resident Evil 4. And now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I do think that's true. I think it's dethroned Resident Evil 4 as my favorite game of Resident Evil of all time. Now, my husband will be a RE4 fan till he dies, probably. He will never agree. But granted... He has not played this game yet. He has only watched my gameplay. So, I think he needs to finish it before he can actually say Rising 4 is still better. But, in my opinion, this one is definitely better. It is perfect in almost every aspect. Graphics, lighting, replayability, time. It is amazing. So, for me, it's going to be a challenge for them to impress me more 
with their Resident Evil 4 remake if it's happening and if they just and whenever the Resident Evil 9 comes out which is the last one of the trilogy is as I've heard I am curious to see how that one is going to compare to this one because compared to Resident Evil 7 I think this one is way better critics will disagree for some reason everybody's really obsessed with Resident Evil 7 they think it was scarier which granted that may be true but in every other aspect besides scare I think this one tops it completely so that's just my opinion I'm very <laughs> obviously prejudiced for this game I absolutely adored it I played it three times including the recording I did for my channel so and I will definitely be playing it more I loved it that much and I don't usually replay games that often but this one is a definite must for me so adding up all the totals it ended up ending with a 96 or you could put it as a 9.6 out of 10 if you like that better which definitely gave it an A it is one point below Attack on Titan and I think the only reason Attack on Titan got as high as a score as it did is just because I am really prejudiced toward that game I love it a lot but if I went back and re calculated my score for Resident Evil 8 I might have actually given it a perfect score on extras uh, yeah so that might have tied it and given it a 9.7 or 97 as well so it may tie Attack on Titan if I redo it but what I landed on was a 96 at the time that I wrote my review so that's what I'm going to stick to but I definitely re recommend this game for people uh, play Resident Evil 7 first hell play all the Resident Evils they're all good in their own way even the five and six that people despise they're all good in their own unique way but that's enough on that I hope you guys enjoyed this review my next review is going to be for the evil within but that will not be for another couple weeks until after I complete it that should be an interesting review but thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more and as always I'll see you all in the next one bye guys